Ooh, doo -doo. Whoops a daisy. All right, and so yes, it's a beautiful day. The sun is shining. The weather's sweet. We get a nice breeze blowing through the house, and it seems like all systems are go. Twitch says live. I got the mic. I got the internet. I got the lights. Um, I got my new streaming stand, uh, streaming center, streaming thing. It's on wheels and can move it around. So, uh, yeah, well, the light is a little bit different to every day, and so I'm going to have to always continually keep playing with these, I guess. However, at the same time, I, um, yeah, I, I still need to work out, tune the audio stream, the audio a little bit. It might be a little bit uh, empty and echoey, but that just kind of comes with the territory. Um, at least I'm in a smaller room with lower ceilings now, so it's easier to manage or control echo, etc. And so I'll be working on it. Good morning, Bert. How are you today? Hope you had a good weekend, buddy. Uh, it was a pretty relaxing weekend here around the house, still just getting things sorted. But also, I bumped into some neighbors and some community association trying to protect the nature was going for a hike, and so I got to go for a hike around the autodrome, which is around our house. Um, yeah, I would, I would, thank you. Uh, I believe that my, the, the audio would be much better, um, most likely. But yeah, I went hiking around this autodrome with a bunch of uh, uh, neighbors and other concerned citizens who want to protect the nature, a professor of biology, um, and yeah, it was a really good time. We finished up at like 12.30 or 1 o'clock, and boy, it was hot, hot, hot. I thought it was going to be a two-hour hike, but it was like three and a half hours or something. And uh, yeah, I could have uh, planned for it a little bit better had I known. But uh, good morning, Nedim and Elif, if you're out there. Um, yeah, excellent. Nice to see everybody up and smiling on a Monday morning. Now I can't see your smiles, but I can only assume that you are indeed smiling. But so as you know, on this show, breaking down the news for my fans out there, you know what's up. Um, yes, I crawl out of bed, I highlight the headlines, and then we jump in here and pick them apart to explore all the linguistic gold and goodness which exist within those headlines. So that way you can better expand your vocabulary, express yourself, and therefore, of course, impress others. And so, um, <clears throat> without further ado, let's just roll the show. And so, good morning, mushrooms, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, brothers, sisters, mothers, misters, and all my cousins out there around the world. It's time to plug in and get the news train a chugging. As the pandemic rages, Trump indulges his obsessions. Ooh, yeah, well, that's the man right there out golfing as um, thousands of people are getting ill and being hospitalized. Yes, the pandemic is raging. Now, it's not angry, but use rage here as a verb as well when we're talking about like wildfires or pandemics, things that do destruction because rage is destructive. I'm going to get back to this, this idea of indulge at the end because we've got a lot of ground to cover and I don't want to get bogged down um, I don't want to get mired in uh, some nitty gritty, so stay tuned and we'll, we, I will indulge you and we will indulge in the explanation of this um, at the end of the broadcast. Trump's weekend represented another sign that he has moved on from the pandemic. To move on, to get over something, to get past something, to get around it. And so yeah, he, he's over it, man. Like, oh, pandemic, it's, it's so boring talking about it. No kidding. Tell me about it. I talk about it every day, every day too. But yes, he's raging around the U.S., setting new daily records in several states. He wants to just talk about the election and the campaign and voter fraud and blah, blah, blah. But he initially, from the start, initial, just like your initials, my initials, CSJ, that's the first letter of each part of my name because they are the initial letters from each of the words or names. And so initially, from the start, he ignored it, then he mismanaged it, missed the prefix, meaning incorrectly or badly, emphasis on the badly in this case, and then to politicize something, just a nice verb here, to make something political, which wasn't necessarily, this is just a health issue, but he decided to politicize 
But much like in every country in our modern day, everything is becoming hyper-political. Everything is being politicized by somebody. He says that a vaccine may not produce herd immunity. A herd is a group of animals, much like cows or sheep. Yeah, think about the word. The guy who collects, not collects, but manages and supervises the sheep he is a shep herd. Get it? Shep, sheep, shep, herd. And so a herd is the group of animals, or it could also be a flock of sheep, but flocks of birds. He herds the sheep. He keeps them all in a group and keeps them moving and keeps them safe if he's doing his job correctly. Uh, you don't want to be like the little boy who cried wolf. But herd immunity is when there's enough people within a community that the virus is not able to continue propagating can, and spreading within the group because you've reached a critical mass of um, people who are immune. Okay, enough of that. Moving on. One of my favorite phrasal verbs here. Uh, to screw around. And I'm not, now, this can be used in slang, meaning to sleep with many partners. Um, just like fool around, mess around, screw around. A lot of the time when we have this around here, it implies a lack of seriousness. Just like at the weekend, I like to just go walk around. Um, I like to mess around in the garage and tinker around with stuff, recycling vocabulary from Friday. And so to screw around, it means to not do something seriously, not taking the appropriate serious steps to address the underlying issue. Only two US states are reporting a decline in COVID-19 cases. So only two states are going down. The rest of them are spiking, surging, going up, increasing, skyrocketing, soaring. All right, couldn't help myself. <laughs> The world isn't laughing at us, and it's certainly not laughing with us, it's pitying us. To have pity, to feel pity, or as a verb, to pity somebody. Have pity for, feel pity for someone, or just to pity somebody. And they feel sorry for us. They're looking at us and saying, wow, we used to look up to you, we used to admire and respect you, and now we just feel sorry for you because all of those ideas and ideals that you held dear are the ones that are actually causing the problem. And so we have effectively shot ourselves in the kneecap. Losing my train of thought, I'm spiraling out of control here, much like the COVID cases in the US. Last week we were talking about breakaway states, breakaway republics that want to be separate from the rest of the whole. Much like Catalonia here, there's a big separatist movement where they want increased autonomy, if not complete autonomy, from Spain. Okie dokie. Hong Kong. A protester voices fear over the national security law. Well, I don't think it's just one. I think it's most, if not many of them, if not all of them, are voicing their fears. That's the whole point of protest. To give your thoughts on a topic. Not just to innocently comment, but you are trying to make a point. Speaking of using your voice, in a repetitive fashion as a group to chant, yeah? Hey, I, uh, uh, except they're chanting white power. And so it's a group of people saying the same thing over and over in a repetitive fashion, often as a form of protest or to draw attention to themselves or to draw the attention of, say, God or something like that. Um, people will chant their prayers, chant their mantras as a group in unison to say the same thing over and over. And so, next up, nice little play on word, Fiji's unusual appeal to billionaires. Billionaires like Fiji. Fiji appeals to the billionaires. Why? Because it's tropical and beautiful and isolated. However, Fiji is actually making an appeal to billionaires, saying, hey billionaires, please, Come, stay with us, stay with us, yes? We can give you your own island, complete isolation, and we'll give you um, semi-permanent visas if you want to come invest your money and stay in Fiji. If you're making coffee for people and you're making 80 grand in tips, you're certainly doing something right, which then appeals to large tippers, and so then you should probably share your secret sauce. Moving on. All right, back to more tourism news, keeping it rolling. Chinese tourists will likely be allowed, oh, and remember, likely means probably, will likely be allowed back into the EU. Aha, uh -huh. so Chinese tourists can come back. However, US will be left out. Here are left out, but it means to be not included, to be left out in the cold, in the dark, 
because they're sick. Sorry that's the way it is, but sometimes that's just how the cookie crumbles. Sometimes it causes a feeling of sadness because if you are left out, then you miss out on whatever's going on and you're not able to gain the benefit. Some crazy news that surfaced over the weekend that emerged. Supposedly, the Russians were offering a bounty on American soldiers to Taliban fighters, saying for every American soldier you kill, we will give you money. Maybe it's um, they're collecting ears. Maybe it's for scalps. I don't Maybe it's for heads. They've put a price on that person's head and it's the bounty hunter's job to go and collect that person. For any Star Wars fans out there, you know bounty hunters from Boba Fett, the most famous bounty hunter of all time, even though he's not real. A bounty is the price on somebody's head. Once again, shirking responsibility, completely unwilling to take any responsibility for anything, much like water rolls off a duck's back. So much for accountability. To crack a safe, to crack a mystery, to crack the case. And so this is a criminal case and they were trying to find the murderer of a child and now after 38 years, probably using DNA, the case has been cracked. And because like, much like an egg, a case or a safe is a mystery what's inside and if you crack it open, then you found the solution and the answer to the case, to the mystery or get the money that was inside the safe and the jewels. On to bears, tragically. A bear in Italy has been, now just some good criminal terminology here, has been sentenced to death. And so, are they going to put him in the electric chair and are they going to hang him? Are they going to go by firing squad? Are they going to do lethal injection? I don't know, but he has been sentenced to death by a judge in a court Probably not. Um, probably just some government wildlife official. Maybe the bear has been terrorizing the town. I don't know. It's a shame. It's probably not the same bear, but he's cute. I wanted to scratch him behind the ears. Oh, choo, 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 choo. Activists want a stay of execution, and that a stay of execution is an official pause before they actually perform the... Um, the killing. It seems kind of interesting because uh, the European Union has roundly rejected the death penalty for crimes committed. However, apparently that does not extend to animals and so this poor little bear is probably going to be put to death. But then again, I don't know what he has done. Devastating toll. We've had take a toll, take a toll on something many times on this show and to have a toll or take a toll on something means to do damage. And what kind of damage are we doing here? Devastating damage. Much like an earthquake will devastate a city. It already implies that damage has been done. This just means lots and lots of damage. Snatched away. And so if somebody snatches something, it just means to grab it and catch it and usually away, pull it away from somebody else in a very quick and rapid fashion. To snatch, to grab something very quickly. It's just a co-location, we see it on here all the time, but to hold somebody accountable for their action. Last up here before we go back to the leading headline, Mississippi's blood-stained flag is America's crisis. Yeah, if you're unaware, Mississippi, uh, forever, always kind of leading the country, and it is emblematic and iconic deep south, holding on to things of the past, much like racism and even the Confederate battle flag, the stars and bars, that X with the stars on it, like was on the Dukes of Hazard car, which was a symbol of the Confederacy, which was a symbol of slavery and therefore then racism as well. That is still on their state flag to this day to overhaul their state flag because they're trying to overhaul their reputation in general because they don't have such a good reputation. Bloodstained because it has the Confederate flag, which then we fought a civil war. If something is stained, that means the color has gone onto it and it will not wash out. We can have red wine stains, we can have blood stains, we can have dirty armpit stains from your sweat. You could also say it's tarnished, it's damaged, it's blemished, it's not perfect, it's not crisp and clean and innocent. We got this idea of indulge. And we can go, we can indulge something, or we can indulge in something. And there's just a slight 
difference in meaning, and so it's not really certain what the writers are going for here. To Typically with indulge, you're going to see to indulge in something. If you indulge in an activity, you're doing it for your own enjoyment. However, if we just indulge something or indulge someone, it's that you're doing it to satisfy their desires. It's not because you necessarily enjoy it. Now, while I'm indulging in this explanation, I'm also indulging your questions, your quandaries, your queries about the word. It is a fine difference and you'll see native speakers mix it up all the time. Now, it's like if you ask me a question about something, it's not something I necessarily want to talk about, but I will indulge you. I will indulge your question, meaning I will satisfy your question. Whether or not I enjoy and indulge in the response, that's a different story. Breaking down the news for Monday the 29th of June. June is already drawing to a close and the days are getting shorter. Winter is coming. But for English Otherwise, thank you for all for tuning in. Thanks for the likes, subscribes, the thank yous, the elbows, the thumbs ups. Pass us along to a friend. Have a beautiful day. And if not sooner, I'll see you at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Much love and bye-bye. Yes, stop the stream.